Welcome to this video from Accounting How. In this video, we will be looking at the suspense account, which is part of the verification of accounting records and the correction of errors. Having prepared a trial balance, if a trial balance doesn't balance, a business or an accountant will know that there are some errors or at least one error within their ledgers and a suspense account will be used to help them to correct these errors. If you haven't already done so, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and like and share the videos. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Accounting How. And we have here then an example question. And there's a couple of ways you could play this video. You might decide to pause now if you feel relatively confident in this topic and have a go at this question. And then once you're done, play the rest of the video and work through and check against your own work. Or if you just want to have a bit of a revision or you are starting this topic pretty much from scratch, you might just want to continue to play and work through the question with me. So the question we have, Martin prepared a trial balance for his business. The debit side totaled 2823 and the credit 2430. He opened a suspense account for the difference and then he found some errors. My advice when you're doing these questions is just to skim through these errors. Don't read every single word, all of the figures, just get a feel for them. So the first one, some property repairs have been entered in the premises account. Second one, the sales journal was overcast, it's too much. The third one, discount received has gone in discount allowed. And the fourth one, we've had a check from Colin, who's a receivable. Um, they put it in the cash book, it says, but no entry made in receivables ledger. And they're asking us to prepare the suspense account for Martin's business, dates are not required. So you can see I've drawn my suspense account without a date column, and I've got a space on the right hand side through my workings. First thing to do is to find the opening balance. We were told that the debit was £2,823, but the credit was only 2430 So I find the difference between these two, which is 393 and because it's the credit side that's currently lower out of the two it means this balance then needs to go on the credit side in my suspense account and there it is and basically what that's done is it's forced the trial balance it's forced the trial balance to balance um, the opening balance in a suspense account could appear on either side it just needs to go on the side which has the least on it the side that's the lowest out of the two as i say in order to force the trial balance to balance and so we're ready now to have a look at the errors. And the first error we have, it says 310 pounds for property repairs has been entered in the premises account. There's a couple of ways to think about this error. All of these errors, it's important that you can recognize the type of accounts. That's gonna be one of the big secrets to this uh, topic. And by type, I mean, are they expenses, assets, drawings, income, liabilities, or capital? Uh, you might be familiar with various acronyms such as uh, dead click. So if I look at this first one, property repairs is an expense, whereas premises, that's something that Martin owns. So premises is an asset. So what's happened is an expense has been entered into an asset account and expenses and assets are both debits. So what we can learn then is that he's got the type of account wrong, but he's got the side right. He's debited the, an account, which he should have done. He should have debited an account, but he's got the wrong type of account. He's put it in an asset when it's actually an expense. And if you know your Crowbock errors, you will know then that if you've got the type of account wrong, but the side correct, as in he's put it on the debit, which in this case he has, he's got the side right, but the type wrong. Therefore, this is an error of principle. And errors of principle, indeed all Crowbock errors, any Crowbock error, doesn't need a suspense account to be corrected. So this one doesn't need to go into the suspense account. And if you can recognize that, then you're done straight off, you're ready to go on to the second one. However, sometimes you might not have spotted that straight away. You might think, oh, let me just work this through, let me see. So we can also look at this an alternative way, a second way, using a working. And what I'm going to do then is think about what he's done. He's put it in premises. So in my workings, I'm going to draw a premises account and he would have put that on the debit because it's an asset, £310. I've just put bank. I don't know how he paid for these repairs, but I'm just going to uh, go with bank. And we know it should be in the property repairs account. 
Well, then in order to correct this, all I need do, I want to end up with it here on the debit of property repairs. So quite simply, all I need to do then is to credit premises and then send that to the debit of property repairs. So let's have a look. Um, credit premises, send that to the debit of property repairs and, it, and the error is corrected. So in order to correct it, we've established, we've confirmed that we didn't need the suspense account. I've still done a double entry. We always need double entries. I've done a double entry to correct it, but I own all I had to do was use the premises account and the property repairs account. And that's because, as we said, it was one of the Kropok errors. It was an error of principle. Watch out for these and these kinds of questions. Quite often there are Kropok errors and non-Kropok errors given in the list. So be alert, watch out, don't fall into the trap. If it's a Kropok error, it doesn't need to be entered into the suspense account because Kropok errors don't need a suspense account um, to be corrected. The next one then, let's have a look. We have the sales journal was overcast by £82. Well, the sales journal is one of the books of original entry. And so when that has been totaled up, casting is just a bit of an old fashioned word for adding or totaling. Um, so it's been overcast. When it was totaled, it's £82 too much. Well, that means when somebody goes on to do the T accounts, the ledgers, the sales account will now be too much. It will be overcast because that figure that's £82 too much will have been transferred from the sales journal into the sales account. And again, we need to think about the types of accounts. So my working, I know it's the sales account that's currently wrong. Sales in dead uh, click is an income. So the credit side is where the figure will be. Now, I don't know what the figure should be. All I know is that it's currently £82 too much. So the way I look at it is I just use a bit of very basic algebra and I say, well, let's call the original figure X and whatever that figure should be, it's currently 82 too much. So I've got X plus 82. I need to reduce that then by 82. So I need to put 82 onto the debit of the sales account and I'm going to send that 82 to the suspense account. There it appears in the suspense. So the double entry to correct that second error, debit sales with 82 and then credit suspense with 82. Let's have a look at the third error. The third error, 36 pounds discount received was debited in the discount allowed account. I'm gonna draw out the two accounts involved and I'm gonna think, what have they done? It says it's been debited in discount allowed. So there it is, it's, it's presumably come from the cash book, from the uh, discount column in the three column cash book but it's inadvertently been debited to discount allowed when actually it was discount received. Just got to be a little bit careful here. It's a bit sneaky, this one. Uh, again, the types are important. Discount allowed is an expense. Discount received is treated as an income. And we know then that incomes are on the credit. So that £36 is supposed to be here. It's supposed to be here on the credit of the discount received account. Well, bit of a problem here because if I was to put that 36 on the credit of discount allowed I would end up double entering that to the debit of discount received well that's not going to fix the error if I do that as a double entry it's not going to fix it because I need it over here on the credit so I'm going to have to deal with this in two stages and the first thing I'm going to do is remove it if you like from the discount allowed account so I'm going to credit discount allowed because that will offset the 36 that's gone on the debit. And I'm going to send that to the suspense. And there it is appearing on the debit of the suspense account. But now I need to put it in the discount received account where it should have been in the first place. So we've said discount received, we credit because it's an income. Credit discount received with 36 and now send that to the suspense account. Put another way, in order to correct that error, I've had to two, do sorry two double entries. I've had to do one to kind of undo the original mistake and get it removed from the discount allowed account. And then I've had to do a second double entry to actually enter it where it should have gone in the first place, which was on the credit of the discount received account. And the fourth error, uh, the last one, a check for £403 received from Colin, a trade receivable, was entered correctly in the cash book, but no entry was made in the receivables ledger. 
So the receivables ledger, a ledger is just a book, an account, a name for an accounting book where, which contains T accounts, and the receivables ledger, the receivables book, just contains all of the T accounts of trade receivables. So basically, it's gone in the cash book, but they haven't put it in Colin's account. So the account I'm looking at then is Colin. And Colin, if he's a trade receivable, again, think about the type. Trade receivables are assets because Colin owes me some money. We don't know how much he owes me, but there must be a balance in his account. We've been selling him stuff on credit. So I'm just to help me with my thinking. I'm putting a brought down balance um, on the debit. I'm just putting BD. I'm not writing balance because it's only a quick working, but it just helps me think about this. So Colin owes me some money. That's an asset on the debit. But he's then paid me £403. And that hasn't been recorded, but that reduces what he owes. So I need to put on the credit then. I need to reduce what he owes me, that £403. And if I'm crediting Colin, I'm going to debit the suspense account. And there we can see it, debit um, suspense from Colin 403. That's all the errors looked at, sorted. The first one we didn't do because it was Cropoc, but the other three needed the suspense account. We have dealt with them, we've corrected them. And the final thing then is to total up the suspense account. In reality, businesses um, may have very well have a running balance in a suspense account because that means there are errors that they still haven't identified and found. But hopefully, if it was right, uh, we would end up resolving the suspense account and it would total. And indeed, in this case, I can see the debit. If I add up the debit, it comes to £475. And indeed, the credit also comes to £475. So that means that the business, Martin's business, no longer um, requires a suspense account. We have identified and corrected the errors that were causing that initial difference of £393 in the trial balance. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give us a like, share, subscribe and follow us on Twitter at Accounting How. If there's anything you'd like to see in future videos, please just let us know in the comments. Thank you very much.